This one intervention helped people to increase their memory accuracy from 65% to 81%. They had faster reaction times and improved sustained attention. And this is how it happened. 20 participants sat in a neuroscience lab at Bihang University. Each of them wore a lightweight cap equipped with tiny near-infrared sensors that could measure how different regions of their brain communicated in real time. They could literally see their brain regions communicating on a screen in front of them. Across three short training sessions, the experimental group, which was half of these participants, were shown a live feedback score, which was a number reflecting how well their frontal and parietal regions were connected and the task was fairly simple they had to increase that score and the outcome was remarkable not just the participants who trained with feedback improved their memory accuracy and attention but also maintained these improvements even a week later and this was all without any supplements or any prolonged study sessions when we talk about focus or memory we often imagine these as separate skills but neuroscience shows that they depend on a shared communication system in the brain also called frontoparietal network the frontal cortex handles executive functions like planning control and sustained attention whereas the parietal cortex manages short term information storage and working memory and together these regions form a bridge that allows us to hold information in mind manipulate it and and stay focused on a task when this connection is strong mental performance feels effortless and when it weakens due to stress fatigue or distractions focus fragments and memory recall drops and so the researchers ask a simple but a profound question can we then train this network directly instead of training its outcome like attention or recall and to test this the team used functional near infrared spectroscopy also called fnris which is a portable brain imaging method that measures changes in blood oxygen using harmless light all the participants completed a verbal working memory task similar to remembering a short list of letters or numbers for the test group or the experimental group a live feedback score showed how strongly their frontal and parietal regions were connected and when the connectivity increased this score also increased the goal was pretty simple to keep the number as high as possible and the control group performed the same task but without the feedback This process is known as connectivity based neurofeedback and it represents a step beyond traditional cognitive training. Instead of practicing the behavior, participants learn to modulate the underlying neural mechanism that supports the behavior. And after 3 training sessions, the test group showed a significant increase in their frontoparietal connectivity. particularly in the left hemisphere a region strongly associated with verbal working memory and no significant improvement was seen in the control group confirming that the feedback itself and not just the repetition drove these results what this study shows is that cognitive enhancement isn't about repetition or memorization it's about optimizing communication within the brain networks improving how information flows rather than just how much much we try to store or how much we try to memorize and of course most of us don't have access to neuroimaging equipments and then the question is how can we apply the same methods in our daily lives and here are some of the evidence based strategies that engage and strengthen the same frontoparietal system the first one is working memory challenges we can try mental activities like and back games or dual task exercises or even recalling lists backward for example when listening to music try recalling what line came two lines before the one you're hearing now or you can use online and back games like brain and back or lumosity or cognifit or you can also practice a listen and recall task listen to a podcast or audiobook while doing some household chore like folding clothes and every few minutes pause and summarize what you just heard the second one is focused attention practice you can spend short structured periods of concentrating on a single task now the key here is dedicating all your attention to that single task and when mind wanders notice it and bring it back 
the act of refocusing is literally the brain recalibrating its network the third one is reward and reinforcement the behang study used a small monetary reward for stronger connectivity so the participants in the experimental group were asked to increase the score and if they do so they will get some monetary rewards after the experiment and you can repeat this by setting small immediate incentives for focused work you can take short breaks a coffee or you can stretch or even acknowledge the process that you focused for a certain amount of time and the fourth one is mindfulness or meditation this practice enhances meta awareness noticing your own thoughts in real time which functions as a natural form of neurofeedback i cannot emphasize enough how good meditation as a practice can be to train your brain this research is an important reminder that memory and attention are not fixed traits they are dynamic processes shaped by how well our brain networks communicate and by learning to tune these connections through practice through feedback or focused effort we can literally really retrain the brain to think more efficiently the bihang university study is an early step but it points towards a future where cognitive training may be as measurable and precise as physical exercise and until then we should remember that improving our memory and attention is not just about focusing our brain to work harder it is literally about training it to work smarter and if you liked this video do let me know what you liked about it and i'll see you in my next one